Hello, everybody. <coughs> Sorry for that. So I'm uh, Julian Kazaru, um, co-founder of uh, OpenIO. I also work on uh, OpenStack uh, integration and uh, all the ecosystem around uh, OpenIO. So OpenIO is an open source object storage solution. It's a pure software. Um, the company was created uh, in uh, June 2015. Uh, but the solution, software solution, was created 10 years ago uh, to handle uh, large uh, email uh, uh, platform for telco in France. So we based in uh, France. We have also an office in uh, San Francisco, in Tokyo also. But, uh, okay. So at OpenIO, we aim to be really easy to install and manage storage and to use it. So what can you do in five minutes? Of course, you can drink an espresso, maybe stretch your body, and uh, deploy an OpenIO cluster. So easy. Don't have uh, to be really an expert in that. So everything we do at OpenIO is to bring massive storage, massive scale storage. And uh, to your data center, and uh, to be and uh, to be easy. So, what about the um, compute and storage uh, dilemma that uh, we all face when we have a lot of uh, compute and storage resources? Usually, you end up with silos of independent uh, compute and storage resources. And uh, what you end up with is wasting resources. So you over over provision things to keep up with SLAs and QoS. And then the costs are completely above the roof. And the complexity becomes a nightmare. So what OpenIO can uh, do about that? The idea of OpenIO is that it's pure software. You install it on uh, commodity hardware, so any regular uh, Linux server you, you can find. You install our software on top of that. And then you can create a really hyper-scalable uh, storage pool. Um, you choose your hardware, which is really great, because if you have old hardware, you can break it into the pool and mix hardware together. We know how to handle uh, such case. It's really easy to start your cluster this way. So what OpenIO can do about, about, about it and um, how we do it. So to store, um, OpenIO really handles really large scalable storage. You can have literally billions of objects in a single cluster and um, thousands of uh, petabytes of data. It's uh, really easy to, to retain such, uh, such numbers. Um, there is a very simple shell nothing architecture. Just bring independent servers into the pool, and you can build a limitless um, storage pool out of uh, regular uh, standard servers. All the metadata is um, distributed by uh, nature, and it's really easy to have millions of containers, as in Amazon S3 buckets, very similar, and you have billions of objects uh, storing on top of that. Of course, storage protect protection is what really matters with OpenIO and uh, with this object storage solution. What you can choose is between um, data replication and, of course, the more efficient erasure coding techniques that you will probably want to use. Everything is supported out of the box with OpenIO. And uh, you can also build uh, more complex topologies where you have multiple data centers across different zones, or maybe build a stretch cluster. That's something really easy to do with OpenIO. Since um, the object storage uh, layer 
is usually uh, accessible uh, with HTTP-like protocols. We, of course, support Amazon S3 and OpenStack Swift uh, integration. So it's really easy to have a um, huge read and write total throughput of bandwidth with these kind of architectures. Every node can serve the data and can write the data. We also provide uh, file sharing protocols on top of OpenIO. You can use it with NFS, for example. And it stores on the same grid. And processing. This is what uh, OpenIO does a bit differently than the others. What we want to do is, uh, if you have a large pool of servers like that, you usually end up uh, wasting RAM of CPU because the storage software doesn't really use it. So what we propose is you, you can run applications on top of the, the cluster, and you are, more clo you are closer to the, where the data is and where your software uh, will uh, interact with it. So it's really a simple uh, architecture. And of course, you reduce the cost because you don't have to buy any more servers uh, after, uh, on the side to handle your workload. Um, for example, what applications we, we run on top of OpenIO is uh, indexing for full text, index, full text search on the objects. What you can do also is video transcoding. Imagine that you have a workflow when you put software uh, video, on, um, video streaming and you want to transcode it. Um, this is really easily done with OpenIO. Just bring transcoder into the grid, and you have a large scalable uh, uh, video transcoding grid uh, capability. But uh, really, how we do it? How's the, how does it work? Um, the main idea is directory. You don't want to track objects because there's billions of them. So what we do is we track containers. So containers is just a huge index, and you can have millions of them on the same cluster. And containers track objects. So it's a really convenient way to handle such a large scale, and it really works. So the structure is flat. You can have um, you can't have a container on top of another. It's just everything is flat, like Amazon S3 buckets or Swift containers, for that matter. This is uh, really what uh, makes it uh, different than uh, Swift, for example, or Ceph. You know, they usually end up with uh, consistent hashing techniques or some uh, variations of it. What the idea of um, OpenIO is that you should not rebalance data when you grow the cluster. It's uh, really not um, good stuff to do in production because you end up wasting time moving data around, and you can't really use your new hardware uh, on the go. So what we do of, at OpenIO is that when you add new nodes, they are automatically discovered, and they are immediately available. And uh, there's no static data placement, no uh, ring or anything. So it's more, it's really easier to manage this way and to scale. For the storage pool, how we choose where to put the data, since it's not consistent based or uh, uh, based on the static uh, data placement, what we do is that we have a process uh, called the conscience. The conscience knows every no every nodes of the grid, and it knows how it behaves and its performance. So we call it every time we have the opportunity to do so, metrics. 
Um, we compute a score with that, and we distribute it to all the clients and all the nodes into the gr of the grid. That can make us uh, do uh, dynamic load balancing. So when you put the data, you really want to, do, uh, to be sure that the node you're contacting is up, that it has a good uh, performance, anything like that. So um, how do we compare to other kind of data center platforms uh, regarding uh, storage? Um, of course, we are hardware agnostic. And most open source software are. Um, we don't rely on any um, appliance. It's, you can really choose your hardware. It's open source, so really the TCO is pretty low. And we have a low um, cost per gigabyte per month kind of model. So it's really easy to start with OpenIO. Actually, you can start right now. You don't have a license to, to get. What we provide up at OpenIO is uh, licensing. Uh, for, uh, it's not licensing, but it's support. Sorry. Compared to hyper-converged platforms, uh, OpenIO really scales at web scale, like billions of objects and petabytes of data. So what about the use case? What can we do with OpenIO? Um, OpenIO started with uh, email and as an email storage uh, software solution. So it can really handle email workloads really well. We have integrations with various um, email uh, servers, such as uh, Cyrus, uh, IMAP, or uh, Zimbra. You can use OpenIO with a brand range of uh, other use cases, such as uh, media content processing, so for videos, or for data archiving. OpenIO made the uh, OpenStack uh, integration. We provide a Swift integration. And uh, so it's, uh, it, it relies on the Swift proxy. So we use the, the Swift proxy from OpenStack. And uh, we integrate the, our native Python API uh, into the Swift proxy. So it's not based on the driver on the object server side. Uh, you don't need any object servers or any account servers or any container servers from Swift. It's really just the Swift proxy. Which is great because you can use the Keystone authentication, the same as OpenStack does, and it's compatible with OpenStack Swift middleware. So for example, the, um, the static web page uh, middleware can be used to handle uh, this kind of uh, uh, static website uh, uh, storage. And of course, it's open source. It's on GitHub. You can check it out. And uh, recently, uh, OpenStack became a corporate member of the OpenStack um, Foundation. So really, really, really happy to be part of the OpenStack uh, family. We are really young in the family, but we are actively working on, of course, the object storage side. But we are also focusing on the uh, file, uh, file system, shared file, uh, system um, integration of uh, Manila. So Manila is uh, something we are uh, really looking into. And uh, what about the uh, latest things we did uh, with OpenIO? So we released uh, our new uh, software. It's aligned uh, with OpenStack Summit uh, in Austin. So 16.04 brings NFS. We bring also HTTP Gateway for video streaming. Can uh, stream videos uh, right from the uh, cluster. 
We also have support for our ARM, and you can run a cluster uh, on a Raspberry Pi, uh, which is a really small computer. So you can have 10 nodes of OpenIO running uh, object storage like that. We also uh, provide um, packages for all the main distributions out there, Linux distribution. And recently, OpenIO uh, became a member of the Open Kinetic, uh, uh, the Kinetic Open Storage project. We member of the Linux Foundation, and we're really excited to be part of this uh, Kinetic group. Uh, we think that it can really change the way we handle uh, storage today, and how you build uh, massive uh, storage uh, platforms. So thank you very much for your attention. Come uh, visit us at uh, A16 Wolf. It's right over there. And uh, that's it. <laughs>